Now, at one point, weren't you supposed to sign with Matthew Knowles? We weren't necessarily supposed to sign with Matthew Knowles. What it was was uh, Tilo, the oldest uh, member of uh, Next, he was cool with Matt. And we went out there to meet with him and we were talking about doing some business. And there weren't any checks cut. And in the end, Matthew respected us and our brand enough to say, listen, I don't have the resources to market and promote your product like y'all deserve. So we went our separate ways. It's any type of meeting of the minds where you come together and, you know, he's a great mind when it comes to marketing. He just didn't have the resources to do what we needed to do. So we just backed off. But anytime you are around somebody or you're taking pictures and people start talking, then it becomes, oh, they're they doing a deal with somebody. We always going to kick the tires on some money and sit around and try to figure out ways to, you know, get that paper. Now, I mean, but you actually go back with, with that crew because you, you had a song with Beyonce back in the day. Yeah, well, we had, a, we had issues because we had a record with um, Destiny Child that I co-wrote called If You Leave. And um, we did it for free. And the, the, the agreement was that they would be on our album because at the time they were gold and we were like two times platinum and they were actually going on before us on the Boys the Men tour. So we had just came off the road. We're working on our new album. They're working on theirs. We went and did a record with them. They were supposed to do a record with us. Well, me and Kelly were really cool. She called me her big brother. And she confided in me saying, listen, you know, I know Beyonce is, you know, amazing and as Matthew's daughter, but I really want people to see what I can do. So I said, I got you. So I told Mona Scott and him who managed us at the time, the record that I have to do with Destiny Child, I want Kelly to lead the other verse. Well, Matthew came back and said he didn't recommend that. And when I insisted, he said, well, how about you guys just have it as Kelly from Destiny Child. And I was like, well, no, because I led the record that we did with Destiny Child and it said featuring Next. It didn't say featuring RL from Next. And then subsequently, uh, Mona cut a deal with Matthew and just had Beyonce do a record with Missy or something. So it took my favor. So it was an issue for a long time, but it was never an issue with Beyonce or the rest of the girls. It was an issue with Matthew and Mona for doing bad business on our end. And that was like my first real dealings with the politics of the industry. And that started, that was the first time that I felt sour, sour, I felt sour about music. And to this day, that was the beginning of me realizing the politics in the game. Recently, Matthew Knowles had a garage sale where he had to sell a bunch of you know, Destiny's Child memorabilia. Did you hear about that? Um, yeah, I heard about it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm an eBay cat. So you, if, if you see some sneakers on eBay or, or some shoes, you, you might have bought them from me because I'm a hustler. It don't mean I'm broke at all. It just means I don't have any use for them or I bought them for this much and I can get that much. It's business. I don't know his finances. I would hope to think that he was responsible enough not to be broke. Um... It could just be a point of him getting rid of things that don't mean anything to him. Because I have plaques up in my studio right now of next that I want to take down because I don't want to look at the past anymore when I'm in here. I want new shit up. But I, people will argue with me and go, well, that's a part of your history. Keep them up. If I had an opportunity to sell some of the shit in my studio and, and make some astronomical amounts of money, I, I might do it because I'm always had a memories. That's all that's important. This, this stuff that's up and these awards and all that, that don't mean shit. What means something is taking care of your family and, and the memories. So I think a lot of people get caught up in the possessions, the physical possessions and, and things like that. It's the experience. You know, if you can sell something and make some money and, and it really don't mean nothing to you as far as the product itself, man, eBay, garage sale, I'm not judging nobody. <laughs> I mean, you would just think, though, that the father of a mega, you know, a mega millionaire like Beyonce would never have to have a garage sale, regardless of how many extra dollars. You know, because considering that, you know, Matthew sacrificed a lot for there to even be a Beyonce in terms of selling their house and, you know, quitting his job to, to manage the girls and so forth. You know, I, I agree. 
But my thing is, you never know what somebody's going through. He might needed a quick, quick lick real quick. Money could have been tied up. I always try to look at the positive because I looked on the internet a couple months back and um, somebody posted RL was broke. You know, they had my, my bankruptcy papers. They didn't realize my accountant uh, and, and people around me that dealt with my finances had, had taken my life savings years ago. Nobody knew that. Um, so I found out years later from my tax attorney the best thing to do is file a bankruptcy. So somebody got a hold of the papers and allegedly it said, oh, yeah, it's $500 in it. No. $500 bedroom set, $300 computer, and I think $50 in, in, in my pocket. And at first my ego was, you know, hurt like, man. But the reality of it is, is most artists and some managers always have people dealing with their finances and people take advantage of that. It don't necessarily be irresponsible artists. I read articles all the time. I I didn't know what bankruptcy was. I was ashamed until I, I found out that Donald Trump had did it like four or five times. It's a tool that you use in business. And I didn't realize that. And I think that a lot of times we look at people going through struggles as something to be embarrassed about. Even if he is struggling and he had to sell some things, I do have to look back to the fact that, yo, he's, we talked about him in, in his garage sale, but let's talk about him selling his house to take care of his daughter and his family. He should never be broke. So the question we have to ask is, should we be looking at Matthew funny or B? You know what I'm saying? Not saying I'm judging B because I'm not in nobody's pocket, but you have to look at the situation as a whole. I had read that, I guess, the accountant that, that stole from you stole from a whole bunch of other celebrities as well. Yeah, I mean, he did. And the funny thing is, I decided years ago that I wouldn't try to think about it because it would make me literally physically sick. Um, you wake up one day and you find out you're going to lose your house. I didn't have a car for seven months. We're talking about almost a million dollars. Um, everything you work for. But the truth is, the one thing I can honestly say that I'm blessed with is the fact that I have a, a skill. I can go in the studio and write and record and engineer and do what I need to do. And I get residuals from past work. I feel sorry for the cats that might have been an athlete and then play up until the time it took for them to get you know, money every month or whatever. What happens then? Because now you're... Your skill set is eroded, you don't play no more, and you have no way to make money. You know what I'm saying? For me, I'll always have an opportunity, God willing, to make that back. So yeah, you know, I woke up one day, and everything was gone. I mean, how much did he steal? Uh, almost a million dollars. A little over uh, three quarters of a million dollars, yeah. I mean, how did he manage to get a million dollars out of your account? Well, what it is, you know, you systematically do things, and then... All of a sudden, you wake up one day and it's all gone. You, you know, of course, you give, um, what is it called, when you, you, you give them the right to sign your name or whatever it is, and, you know, there's investments and things that you really think is money in his stocks and bonds and it's really nothing there or it's really his company and it goes under and they take the money out and you're done. It, 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 for me, to be honest, my whole career, I probably didn't sign a check till I was 28. I didn't want to know how much money I had because the nigga in me would go, well, I, I can go buy this. I got this much. I, I was living off for them. You know what I'm saying? And taking pictures after the concerts or little hosting gigs where I made cash, everything else was going into account, in, into an account. So I never wanted to know how much money I had. I didn't know to look at my money. I wasn't mature enough to understand. I probably didn't start balancing a checkbook until I was like 30, 31. Because I'd never, I never, I had people around to do it. I always wanted to just focus on the music. I didn't really, in my mind, become a man until I turned 30. Not because I, I didn't want to do things, but when, when you're making all this money, people want to handicap you. They want to be needed. So they're not going to teach you and give you the tools you need to succeed by yourself. Because if you do it by yourself, you don't need them. You don't need them. They don't get paid. So... You know, it's a big lesson that I learned, and I'm, I'm glad I'm still here. It is what it is.